Now we are having our last speaker. He is uh, Andrea Bonifacio, and uh, he has been dealing for a long time with the heritage and to improve the uh, the way in which heritage can be actually managed and uh, uh, developed uh, along the coast of Adriatic Sea since uh, she, he is coming from Venice. So Venice has been called into the, call, the discussion for long, uh, many times, uh, and so... This is the logo of the uh, company I've been working with in the last 10 years. And um, as you see, the name and, and the picture explain very clearly uh, we are uh, based in Venice and our job uh, is related to maritime heritage and this is a, the typical uh, medieval uh, ship for transportation and I'm, I'm, I have to talk about uh, cultural heritage, and maritime heritage management, and uh, the, the um, topic was mainly uh, the networking for uh, how somebody of you already told before, um, maritime heritage is mainly uh, networking, is mainly relationships between ports and population and cultures. Uh, this is somehow um, the, the layers of our networks, uh, each color should represent somehow um, a different level of uh, relationship we have uh, developed in the last ten, uh, 50, oh, ten, 10 years uh, in different topics and different um, situations. But this is the main, um, the main object of our study. We are um, based in Venice, but uh, we are not work, um, looking um, to, to Venice mainly, but to the relationships with, uh, historically developed uh, from Venice to, in, to the commercial routes. And as you see, is uh, the highway somehow, the railway uh, connecting uh, the Central Europe to, to the East and the Silk Roads somehow. Uh, of course, there was also commercial routes to, to West and North of Europe, but starting from the arsenal, that was the first uh, factory producing, able to produce uh, one galley per day when needed, and somehow connecting Venice for the supplies with the woods, mountains, and surroundings. Well, this is the medieval um, map of the arsenal. Ideally, we, I can take you uh, through the um, main ports of the um, Adriatic Sea. This is um, Pirano, Istria. And going south, uh, this is um, Rovigno, very important for us uh, as because of the, um, what are they are developing on maritime heritage today. Uh, this is uh, the fortress of Pula, uh, a very important industrial port after the Austrian uh, decision to, to um, take there the, the main uh, arsenal, military arsenal, the Navy base, and so on. I will take you south. This is Zara, Sebenico, Trau, Curzola. Um, this is Cotor, Cartaro. Uh, today in uh, is in Montenegro, uh, at, the, at that time was the so-called Albania Veneta, Albania Veneta, and this is now in Albania, um, Capodonia, Corfu, 
Metoni in Greece, Gran Vusa. Okay, this is um, in Cyprus. Sure, and um, Nicosia, you can recognize the same shape of the bastions of Palmanova. We are back to Italy now, in Friuli, in north of in north of um, Venice. And this short trip was, uh, you recognize a lot of towers, walls, and fortresses, because it's the way we choose from the beginning to uh, explain how the ports was somehow following a, a standard having the defensive system, the commercial system, the supplies, and, and how was connected. Because our aim was always considering uh, the single points of this um, maritime heritage as the part of, the lar of a larger system, as well as in, the, uh, in, in later centuries, the single fortification was built with the same uh, uh, approach and has to have to be uh, intended as a part of the larger defensive system. This is a, a map, you perhaps can see, of what was the evolution and the, how many uh, fortresses was and, and defensive, local defensive systems was built in Europe during uh, the 19th and the first part of the 20th century. Uh, I show this because it's, of course, an extension of our uh, job on maritime heritage following the Venetian. Venetian was, in the um, Renaissance, the, somehow the inventor of the great innovation of the bastion systems, um, an innovation that was following and arriving to the beginning of the 19th century as period of development. This is the, some of the defensive systems, the fortresses in uh, the mm, northeast of Italy area, somehow protecting Venice also by the mountains. And this is uh, the yellow points are the fortresses and the mm, batteries built in Venice during this long period from the Middle Age to the 20th century. More than 100 uh, dots. This, I say this because uh, one of the main uh, um, fortresses of uh, the mainland uh, is nowadays our um, Headquarter, and we are managing these 48 hectares um, of fortresses, somehow mm, leading the mm, local system. You see other fortresses here in the lagoon and in the mainland, and how the impact is on the, mm, on the landscape, too. And this is the fortress I would like to talk to you about. As you see, is a gate on the lagoon with a channel going in deep in the, main, in the dry land. And this area was a port, was a, one of the port connecting uh, the ship, the where arrived the ship connecting to the main port, where uh, outside, uh, outer to the lagoon, uh, where the great ships arrived, um, smaller ship arrived in this kind of ports. It, this was transformed in a, a fortification in the beginning of the 19th century by the French army. So uh, the, um, the challenge we accepted years ago was uh, 
to invent a future for this kind of heritage, mm, somehow uh, approaching with the tools of the management, of the um, mm, territorial marketing, development and the so-called sustainability. Uh, so we created a um, connection with uh, the higher level of uh, number of, of networks possible. During years we developed a, a network on the Adriatic fortresses. Uh, we are also involved in, of course, in networks about uh, the development of fortresses in Europe. And about maritime heritage, we find the way to um, improve inside the fortress uh, a small museum devoted to the local traditional boats. Uh, that boats uh, used for job, transportation and fishing especially with a history that arrived to the um, end of this period of small wooden boat used for job, but reused and transformed for leisure, like regattas and so on, um, before the introduction of plastic and other material. Um, this allowed us to create a small uh, museum thanks to a local level of connection with um, a local network within, between us and the associations, volunteers and other institutions involved in this topic. Uh, from the mm, Maritime Museum of the Navy in Venice, very important, to the volunteers association helping us to keep um, to open the museum to the public, to the um, one of uh, two or three of the main uh, associations studying and preserving the um, traditional boats, studying the um, archaeology of uh, maritime archaeology and so on. This is the fortress. Um, so, somehow this uh, is nowadays the main topic we are dealing with in this, this fortress. Of course, we de de developed a documentation center on fortresses and fortified heritage with a, mm, a lot of books published. This is a few pictures from the museum. And this is somehow the, the main topic we deal with. We are not much interested in, in the conservation of the, of the boat the, themselves. We are interested in the preservation of their use, uh, the knowledge connected with them, with the construction, manutention, and mainly with uh, all the sour fare, the knowledge mm, still existing. Um, this is per perhaps not exactly a museum, but an eco museum for the, mm, the main piece, we, the most important piece we are, we have are the people rowing or teaching and learning uh, the, row, the rowing uh, in the traditional way. In fact, we produced these original uh, masterpieces that is written in Italian, but showing how that boat was used more than how it was built. Of course, we did it, but we also did it fishing, for repairing in the shipyards, the other boats, and so on. Well, 
This is a part of our activity. There are two professors on board explaining the uh, history of the territory and two people um, showing and teaching how to row in um, traditional boats. This is a special kind of gondola, traditional. And another activity we did it is um, this is an, an old traditional boat, quite destroyed. And we get it and we, from time to time, have the volunteers uh, teaching to people how it can be restored. And in a few months, we'll be flo uh, floating again. OK. And this is our uh, interactive storytelling. You can print it and build it with the glue and paper and, and, and the scissor. And this is actually uh, tested in the um, uh, Triumph port in Rome. And the children, uh, every weekend, they test for dozens of babies and with the parents cutting the paper and building the, and building it. They phone me when they finish the experiment and they are, oh, it's too complicated, it's better we do that. But this is the technology we are adopting as well as we are planning uh, the wooden pieces to be assembled in the museum by people touching the wood uh, instead of the 3D uh, technology, yeah, the real wood. Okay. We also are member of the uh, Association of Maritime Museum of Mediterranean Sea. Uh, every year we, we organize a forum and this is a great occasion to share uh, the, um, our opinion, um, best practice, but also to create uh, innovation and share the, uh, the specific standard for the museum, Naval, Naval Mediterranean Navy Museum. Uh, we elaborate, uh, for instance, a standard um, way to the the description of the traditional boats. And next year we will be in, um, in the ICOM uh, assembly in Milano talking about uh, an important topic we, we are developing in the last two years, that is the, the concept of maritime uh, landscape, or better, seascape. Is something still not existing in the papers and the charts, international charts, like the UNESCO. The, there are some local charts uh, developed in the Mediterranean area, the chart of Rome, we already subscribed, uh, or the chart of um, sorry, in, in Lis not, not Lisbon, uh, Faro Convention promoted by the, the Council of Europe. That is, are all pieces very important for all of us because gives the, the other kind of standard in the development of cultural heritage. Um, we are approaching this, uh, taking the, what is good and, and useful in the, the already existing charts, adding the specific, specific of, of the uh, Mediterranean uh, maritime heritage. And that's one of the main goals we are uh, facing too in work in networking. This is because it's focused in the concept of uh, seascape and cultural landscape or cultural seascape means uh, have a, a 
uncorrupted eye somehow to be able to understand images and landscapes like, like this. Um, but we have to be very um, skilled because it's true, it, this is awful. You can't be a ship higher than the bell tower. It's absolutely uh, unsustainable. But at the same time, yes, we already worked in, in the um, archaeology and in, um, sorry, yes. At the same time, you don't have to forget that Venice is not a common city. Venice, Venice is not a city with a port. Venice is built on the water by the, the boats and is exactly a port and at the beginning was just that. So it's difficult to say how some, somewhere else you can say we take the port away because you take away the, the city, the, the sense of the city. But it's true at the same time that in this kind of boats, nothing happened related to the city or a really low level of relationship. And under the economic point of view is not so important. It's more perhaps more the damage we have than the gain arriving to the city. So we have to have a policy, a long-term policy, to change the, not only the shape, how, li how big is the boat, but what happened between the tourism and the city. So we are involved in this kind of education of uh, the approach to the cultural landscape. And Venice is quite um, important in Venice, this, uh, this approach. Uh, personally, my idea is that, per, okay, should be smaller ships, but um, have to be uh, not leisure and casino and so on, should be a cultural experience, the tourism in Venice. Otherwise, you can go to Las Vegas or somewhere else. Uh, this kind of ships, I guess, produce two million uh, tur tourism per year. It is not a, a, a small number, but it is not a big number for Venice that actually has 22 million tourism. So a 10% less, but avoiding this awful uh, spec show, uh, perhaps, can be can be affordable if we look it in a in a positive perspective, uh, trying to produce as sailing and a cruising uh, with something similar to the experience of the traditional boats. That's of course in our DNA. I skip the um, okay. This is a project on marit on uh, maritime landscape. Uh, committed by the Veneto region that is the authority for the uh, land planning and we introduced the fortresses and uh, the shore um, landscape. This is quite interesting. Uh, we presented this book uh, last week and is an um, unprofessional archaeologist, Venetian archaeologist, in the last 40 years, digged and experimented a lot of uh, all the Venice Lagoon. And we have now the evidence that Venice was not created after the arriving of the barbarians, was a port in, during the Roman period. And in the last 20, 30 years was already very well discussed, but now there are the, uh, the archaeological evidences, and it fits with a, a continuity between the um, Roman, uh, the Roman period, the kind of using the sea, the trade, and 
uh, build the ship, the building of the ships, and what Venice did uh, for the next thousand years. Just to finish, uh, the other topic we are dealing with is uh, contemporary art. As you see, there are students here working. Is this is again the fortress? Uh, because one of the topics we dealing deal with in the reusing uh, an, an heritage uh, is what to do inside when uh, also when it's not how was this mm, marketable, but for the development of the cultural culture in our uh, society, what can we do? The opinion, our approach is that in this, uh, when you have an abandoned uh, good um, building or a fortress or uh, can be a part of the port, perhaps the art can suggest us the, uh, a vision we can't have otherwise, just the empathic uh, approach. So we are working in this field also. And I'm sure I forgot the 50% of the things I would like to say, but I think better we go uh, to enjoy a dinner together. So thank you very much. <laughs>